Mr. Brian Flowers. <laughs> Good afternoon, everyone. <laughs> Welcome to uh, Titastic Channel. Thank you. I see there's no expense spared here for the interview. We've hired a part of the beach, especially for you, and uh, because you're a VIP in certain circles. How much did it cost for an hour? Just so we know the production cost. Uh, 50 baht per deck chair, and I think they threw in the tables for free, but the menu was thrusted upon us as if we have to order something. So we ordered some, um, I hope you're okay with pineapple. Yeah, I'm good anyway. I, I ate this John T. M. sauna earlier. And you've had your coffee. Would you like another water? I've got enough water, thanks. Okay. So today, Mr. Brian Flowers, for those that don't know you, um, I think you've been labelled as <clears throat> under different titles. Some not very nice ones. Oh. Let me highlight maybe a couple of that are okay. <laughs> Nightwish Foundation founder and group title holder and King of Pimps. King of Pimps, Soy Six King, uh, the King of Pimps. <laughs> Someone called me Media Muggy all the other day, which was quite funny. Oh yes, yes right. Yep, Patea News in English and in Thai. And what other um, labelling have you been issued? Well, I just got introduced as a as the the fight gym owner. So in different areas, I'm known as di different people. Some people know me as a forum owner. Some people know me from the news. Some people know me from Nightwish Group. And now I'm a gym owner. We should talk more about that as well later because that's your latest acquisition, right? A business venture or hobby? Yeah. yeah, I mean, if I meet people that don't know me, I just say I work online, it's easier. Oh, sorry. Was that full? It was okay, it was her beer. <laughs> I'll have to buy another one. Production costs have just doubled, I've just knocked over a beer. The ants are happy. <clears throat> They've got some sugar to uh, collect. Okay, before we crack off into the detail, today is all about getting to know Brian a little bit more for those that have never seen any interviews or have met him in person. Um, great guy, very knowledgeable, uh, entrepreneurial, Mr. Positive in every sense. And um, But I guess this, what I'd like to gear this interview, and it might be quite lengthy, I counted up earlier the questions, so it's over. 80 questions I have for you and, and uh, we can see how we get on with that because it may be in several parts or it may be a marathon of an interview but um, I'm really uh, happy that you've uh, allowed me to invite you down to my one of my office locations here on Patea Beach to cover these questions with you. It's a nice office. <laughs> so what I wanted to cover was only three, maybe I call them ice breaking questions. And uh, so I wanted to test your entrepreneurial intuition, intuition. And uh, I was going to ask you, what was the first question you think I'm going to ask you? Well, I thought maybe he's going to ask me about what books I've read, which I, I have, I do have a list on my website, but uh, Brian dot flowers, but I, I didn't update that list. I've got about 600 on my phone. Um, so yeah, I thought you're going to ask me what book. That's true, I will do, and that is coming, uh, but it's not my first. Um, that was actually my first question. The first, yeah, yeah, I should have guessed. <laughs> Tell me, so as I was saying, the, 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 the interview is more about getting to know you a bit more. So to recap, we'll do that from the outset. And then to get a bit more into how you think as a person from an entrepreneurial style through to building from an idea through to so your conception right through to fruition of a business and talk a bit more about the business side of things and the entrepreneurial aspects of that. I think that's quite important for a lot of people who I think you inspire and um, people can reflect on maybe their history of maybe having a business or being more entrepreneurial in some way. So it'll be good to, to see how um, your past has helped you achieve that and, and the businesses that you've got involved with and started and the lessons you've learned on the way. Um, but first of all, um, let's hear about more about yourself. Tell me more about yourself. What, 
kind of person would you say you are? Well, you should go by whatever people say, really. My, my wife says I'm too nice. Um, my dad probably says I'm stubborn. Um, I think one of the good things about myself is I don't quit and I'm, I don't, I, I listen to people, but a lot of people have bad advice. You know, the majority are wrong in most cases when it comes down to business. So I have enough ignorance to ignore some people. I have a bit of self-confidence. Um, yeah, I, I think um, in general, just I'm, I'm too kind and I think um, my mind's going 100 miles an hour all the time. So that's the type of person I am. I'm always thinking about something. I'm always doing something. If anyone talks to me on a daily basis or on my Facebook, they'll see that I'm always putting ideas out there. Someone said the other day I'm full of hot air, but I don't really understand that conversation, um, that drive because I'm always doing stuff. And, you know, like I had an idea today to start news in Phuket, which I can only do that if I have a couple of sponsors lined up. So I can do it for sure. I've already spoken to the team. We can, I've already priced it in. I just need some advertisers. So I, I am always working on ideas. There's a couple of ideas which I plan a couple of years ahead, but I don't talk about it until we get there. Right, so it's like, almost like you've created a success in that realm in one place. And it's one of my mentors would say you're cookie cuttering it. You're just same principles applying it in a different location because you've done the research and it works yeah there is a bit of that but it, the way the way the news is there's no money in it but I, I just said right okay let's get the thai news and people say there's no money in that but there might be somewhere you know even if it's youtube videos and then i've got the english news which there's there's more money in that with adsense but there's probably less money in reviews so if i if i have four different media um outlets with four different channels and four different groups and facebook pages then i've got a better chance of breaking even which is the goal you just never know when your next superstar is going to be so if you if you buy four, four bars in one go one of them's going to be a killer you know maybe one of them's going to fail and neither two might be okay and you're creating the option of where to go for people rather than yes or no to just one up your bar well there's a lot of benefits involved yeah because um like with the news at the moment I, I've, i'm paying everyone full 100 uh, percent, but i'm giving them more work so i've got a lot of resources which i can share for for any new news that i do if you were to describe yourself in three words only and I mean three only, try to stick to three, what would they be? Oh, that's a difficult one. Um, well, this is an opportunity to compliment myself. I, I should insult myself, really. I would say um, hard-headed. No, it's better if I insult myself first. Hard-headed. Uh, um, I don't know. Like. I'm pretty selfless when it comes down to a lot of things. I'm I'm too nice. Yes, yeah, it's, it's tough. I'm honest for sure, and um, I'm trustworthy. They're they're some of the things I pride myself with. Hard-headed, trustworthy, and selfless. There we go. Perfect. Now let's get into more of the informative questions. A bit more about your company, its vision, mission, goals, maybe values and future projects. <clears throat> and a bit more of the entrepreneurial aspect relating to those. Where would you say you got your entrepreneurial spirit from? I think it was just trying to prove everyone wrong. When I grew up, I had two brothers and I just tried to hard to be different. And then I got told no to everything and I just wanted my freedom. And then when I found Thailand, I thought, I'm going to quit my uh, uni and I'm just going to come here and I'm going to do whatever it takes to make money. From from young age, I had paper rounds when I was 12. I was knocking on doors, washing, asking if they wanted a car washed. I was doing cow singing the whole of December. I did trick or treating for the whole of like Halloween. And then we used to, um, yeah, just knock on people's doors and ask if they want their car washed, which I think I already said. And I used to knock on people's doors and ask them if they want me to walk the dog. So I used to find like four or five people and then some days they'll say, yeah, well, I, I charged them two pounds. Some days they said they don't want it doing, so I took the dog anyway. But I, I had all these people. So whenever I wanted money, it was like, um, 
I, I just just found work all the time. Like when I had a paper round, a guy was cleaning his car, and I said, "Do you want me to do that for you?" Because it was like a nice BMW, and I knew he could afford it. And then next minute, he's like, oh, "I'm going away for a week. Uh, can you look after my plants?" Then it was like, "Oh, can you creosote my fence?" And then next minute, he said, "I want you to come motocross with me because." I need to have a marshal with motocross. Every every racer needs to have someone as a marshal. So then I was holding flags on the corners and I was only 14, 15. But just because I said yes to everything, I was getting all these jobs. And I could have had a job in his company and worked my way up if I wanted to. But there was a problem one day. Um, there was this massive scratch across the BMW and uh, he, he basically said, it was it me? And I said, no, it wasn't me because he reckons I did it when I was washing the car, but it was his daughter, it was the same height as her, and I, and I seen her doing something like that. So her, his daughter had scratched it all, and of course, I, you know, he, he confronted me about it. But anyway, that, that's what I've been doing all my life. I've, I've been working and doing paper rounds and just finding opportunities. And I guess from that as well, because then he's in a position to, if he's asked, oh, who does your fence? Who does your gardening? Who cleans your car? It's awesome. You're going to get referral business from that as well. So you're also being referred on to other people, which is good. And um, were your parents entrepreneurs as well? No, my dad was an electrician for 25, 30 years. My mum, it wasn't until later, um, after we'd grown up, she was seeking a career. So she, she managed to qualify as a, a bereavement counsellor but she didn't have a chance to practice it for long. Um, my dad's been an electrician working for himself, so he's not, he does have a different mindset to other people, but he, he was never that motivated. I, I, when I worked for him, I wanted to grow the company and my dad's just like, you know, I've had enough, which I understand more now than I did back then. Back then I just wanted him to take on all these big contracts. But now I kind of understand, you know, it's just better to have that just to relax sometimes and not have all those big worries. So what, what would you say your key driving force to become an entrepreneur was, or did you sort of stumble into it just through wanting to do something for a return? I, when, whenever I worked for someone, I would have that one time where I was disrespected or just treated badly and I would just walk out. I, I wouldn't care about anything there. I would just say, right, I'm not accepting that. And I thought the only way to control my future is to be an entrepreneur, but I didn't plan this specifically. I came to Thailand thinking I need to make some money and I had Bataille Addicts, but I didn't know how to make money. So I sold advertising. Then we started doing, I started doing websites for people. And then I started, um, you know, working with this private investigation guy. And then I was, I, I did loads of stuff to try and make money. But you just kind of like turn into an entrepreneur. You come to a town where making money is impossible. Every guy that comes to Bataille, it's like, what do I do for a job? Is it running a bar or do I do a boring sales job for a real estate company that they might not pay you a salary for? So Bataille is a perfect place to be an entrepreneur. It's not easy at all. But if you want to make money in this town, you've got to find an opportunity. People ask me, if, is it a good idea to open a bar? And I just say to them, you need to look at yourself first. You need to know who who you are as a person. There's opportunities and everything out here. You've just got to figure it out. So you've got a number of businesses, a group that encompasses some of those, but out of all of those, which one would you say the idea of that business derived from? Maybe it's a good opportunity to talk about your latest business adventure, which is, maybe, I think, born from a, a hobby or a passion of yours of getting fit or keeping fit. Yeah, I, I've I've been doing Muay Thai for six years, and then I've I've just had a year off because of my operation, and I and I want to do health. Um, I want to help people out with health. I thought about doing a place in Koh Yang where you come to not eat for eleven days, so you pay to not eat. I always joke about that. When I go down there, I say, what? I'm paying five and a half thousand baht a day and you're not even going to give me food because you just go there to starve yourself. But I love the whole process of, you know, cleaning your system out. I want to help people out that are, are, are very obese and, you know, need, 
I'm not saying that I'm going to fix illnesses. I'm just saying, you know, let's get people that are fed up and in the roots. Let's change their attitude, bring them down to um, a Muay Thai camp, get them fit. So I always say, like, if you have a bow with your wife, your relationship's going to suffer. Everything's going to suffer. And you're going to end up drinking more, whether you like it or not, smoking more, hang around with the wrong type of people. But with a gym, someone said to me the other day, well, that's going to take more of your time up. I said, yeah, it will, but I go to do Muay Thai anyway. So when I'm down there, all my friends become more, more fighters and more fit people, and it helps with my mentality. So that's why I'm going to the fitness world, because it helps me out. I'm overweight at the moment, and I'm going to get that back down in the next uh, few months. I'm just getting through a few issues. So the health business is where I want to be in. I love the entertainment business because it's a lot of fun, and I, I'm never going to abandon that. But for, for me personally, just my 100% my business is the Muay Thai um, MMA place. And you find that um, on deciding a location for that, was it driven by the price or availability or purely to attract people from the area? Or what, what was the decision process for locating, locating the business where it is? Because um, I, I used to train there five or six years ago and I put a post on my Facebook saying that my dream is to have a Muay Thai MMA place and I just, um, I, I looked at Eagle Gym, I looked at the one behind Max Muay Thai, I looked at loads of places and um, the owner of Golden Glory messaged me and he says, oh, you know, I've got a good deal for you. So out of respect for people, I won't say how much it was, but it was a very, very generous, very generous deal. And he just, you know, he's, he's got a bit of money behind him and he, and he seen my passion and he just said to me, you know, I, I know you're gonna take this somewhere. I'm not gonna just like sell it. I'm not gonna sack wits. Everyone loves wits and I'm gonna um, make a good go of it. So yeah, that's the reason why I got it. The location is okay between Bataya and John TM and there's no traffic down there and there's plenty of parking. For expansion into more of the um, health side of things, if I remember from your latest video, with regards to uh, another type of resort attached to it just across the road. Yeah, I thought about doing a separate resort for people that want to lose weight or they want to get fit, but it has to be separate to the fight gym because we need serious fighters coming down, right. and I don't want to mess up the branding by people thinking it's an amateur place or it's it's for um, fat people. So. What we can do is the professional fighters, because they all need to earn some extra money, they can help people that are in a bad place and lose some weight. Right, so complementary need... businesses. Yeah, I just need a toilet. Can we stop a sec? We can. Oh, it's killing me, I can't. <laughs> you all right? Yeah. I just need a piss, it's killing me. It's the toilet, Chewy. Yeah, it's 2,000 years later. Considering the fierce competition in today's business world, particularly under the climate we find out we're finding ourselves in the last 12 months how would you highlight your company's competitive advantages well we've got a very very good team behind us we've got a core team most power owners they've just got you know a man and a man and a wife we've got you know five or six guys in our core team so we've got people behind the scenes we're constantly trying to innovate you know it's not we're not exactly Elon Musk or anything like that, but we, we're constantly improving things. We have a lot of data that a lot of bar owners can't get because we've got so many bars. We can, there's all sorts of things that we can do, but the biggest thing is we're building pages and groups, which uh, takes a lot of time and effort. Some people want to post in our group and then they complain, but we're ones building all these pages and groups. So our footprint on social media gets bigger and bigger 
one of the areas which we weren't so good at was YouTube, which we're now, you know, we're covering. But I would say that our competitive advantage is that we're all working together. We've got a lot more data than other people and um, we, we're constantly evolving. I'll say to some bar owners, you know, why don't you do this? It works better. And they say, no, I don't think so. And then a year later, they're doing it. And I just say, why do you think we were doing it? To, to be our souls? We were doing it because it was more profitable and that's what the customers likes. And you gave that as free advice to them? So. I do all the time. I say to you guys, if you want me to get involved and, you know, give me like some percent or, you know, just on just profit wise, whatever, I can't, because there's a conflict of interest with Soy6, I, there's nothing I can do down there. But if they want me to advise them, I can. But then what they do is they don't listen. And then I see them struggling for a few years, whereas they could just be making money much more instantly. Yeah. I seen a bar owner one day and he sent me a message a week after saying, my, my sale, my profits increased by 15% since I've seen you. But, you know, because that, that type of guy, he listens. Anything I tell him, he listens, and he's doing very, very well. So if you had a 10% stake, obviously, your well, fee is, is essentially paid for by the additional... Yes, of course, but people don't see it that way. They, they don't see all my resources and all my knowledge and all the trial and errors and all the data that I ha we have, you know. Uh, they don't see all that. They just say, well, I'm not going to give away my big piece of the pie, which is going to be a small piece of the pie. But anyway, I don't care about that anymore. I just want to do my own businesses. That's much better. So what would you say, and you may have just highlighted it there, what would you say makes you stand out of the crowd? What is your USP, your unique selling position or proposition in this marketplace? I think um, I, I just keep going all the time. I don't give up. You know, if people say to me, um, oh, you can't do this, you can't do that, why not? You know, why, why can't you do it? Like why, you know, if people say to me that these, these things aren't impossible and I always find a way, I'm a problem solver. I don't talk too much, I'm an introvert and some of my best ideas is when I'm driving and I, and I think and I think and I think about every eventuality and I think long term. And my problem is that some people around me, they don't, they're thinking this week or, or today or tomorrow Whereas I'm thinking months ahead, so some of the decisions I make are, are way ahead of what everyone else is thinking. And in some ways, that that's a that's a really really good um, that's a really good attribute I have. But it, it's bad socially because a lot of people don't understand where I'm doing, and then six months later they understand. So uh, that's why I want to do businesses on my own because I can plan ahead and I don't have to you know, discuss things and try and explain everything with people and I'm educating myself yeah. as fast as I want. Indeed, indeed. And, and on that point, <clears throat> people obviously come to you, they see uh, either immediately or later on down the line when they've, I guess they're almost lurking in the background and measuring your performance about your ideas and what it is you do. And I guess you get from time to time investors coming to you and want a piece of that pie. They don't want to do the work, but they maybe want to throw money at an idea that you have already started. And, and, and I believe some of the, the bar's expansion was attributed to those investors as well. Um, how do you handle those investors and funding issues in your business? I don't have, I don't have people um, specifically saying they want to invest with me. Like if someone came to me and said, I want to buy a hotel, and I want, you, I want you to have a percent and run it, then I will say, you know, if it's in the right location and it's, it's gonna fit my demographic, then, you know, let's, let's look through it. With the bars, um, a lot of people approach me with one, two million, and they say, I want a percent of Nightwish Bar, I want a percent of Sex and City. And I just say to them, no, we don't do that. I don't, it's not a pyramid scheme. I don't sell little bits. If um, someone wanted to buy into the whole business, it's going to be a lot of money and they'll get a percent of everything. I'm not interested in that unless it's someone that I really know and they're prepared to, to sit on the back and just let us get on with it. My biggest worry with investors is having someone that's just on your case all the time. They have to just, they have to just stay out of it. The biggest problem in companies is when you've got an investor 
or someone that has only 50% of the data and then they're getting involved and you have to explain to them all the time. So we're not looking for investors. If someone came to me and says, I want to invest a load of money in your fight um, gear company idea, you know, it'd have to be a lot because I can just do it by myself and I've got the freedom to move fast and quickly. One of the problems that Richard Branson had when he first um, sold his company publicly, he he had um, all these board members telling him what to do all the time and he couldn't execute his ideas. So no, I don't really want investors and I don't really want, um, you know, partners. But if someone says to me, I'm going to buy a bar in such and such a place and it's not under Soy 6 and I say, OK, well, I, I can help out with that if they give me a percent just to be an advisor. That, that's the way we can do things. So moving away a bit more from the business aspects to maybe more bringing the interview more to the next level and, and letting our audience maybe become more familiar, familiar with your personal touch behind the business success. Can we delve into a bit more about what a typical, you know, maybe you can give us the outline of, of, the, of uh, the schedule of one of your typical working days, if you could call it that. It sounds like it's more of a, a paid hobby for you because you're enjoying it so much, but what is a typical working day for you? Um, I, I have days where I schedule um, days and then some weeks I just say stuff it. I'll just wake up and I, and I try to keep all my time free. So apart from making these YouTube videos, I never set a time because I don't know what's going to go on. Sometimes there's a situation going on and it needs my time. The other night I was cloning websites for Nightwish Group and you know, then there's like a problem with we're doing some changes on the news and then I need to spend time with that. And also I've got a, a child as well. So today I took my kid to, bre to breakfast with my dad. And then after breakfast, I drove around and looked at a few businesses. And then I met a friend for a coffee that was looking at a bar unit today. And then I spoke to another guy about some more businesses. And then I drove around the area looking for locations because I've got another friend that needs a location right now and I'm trying to help him out. So normally my ideal day would be Muay Thai 6, 7 a.m. And then I try and jog after that. And then I come home um, and spend some time with the kids. But at the moment I'm doing the kids stuff in the morning for an hour or two. And then I'm usually on my computer by seven, eight, nine at night until I go to bed. But on an ideal day, I would be on my computer all day getting things done. I don't need to go outside. Uh, two o'clock, I've been going down Soy 6, but normally I would go down there at one o'clock when Bag's there. Some people say I don't go to Soy 6, but I'm often down there 11 or sometimes 1 p.m. I'm not down there late at night. So, and, and now, we're with the gym, I've been going down there once a day, just checking on things but I don't need to be there. So I don't have an average working day. Like um, next week, I'm thinking about going to Simon's Resort to do some interviews. I don't know if you want to come along for that. Yeah, that'd be great. Yeah, that'd be great. So Simon. Yeah. I'm going to do some videos on his channel and then maybe do one on my channel. Yeah, and if you want to come for three days. That'd be awesome. That'd be awesome. Yeah. Shout out to Land of Smiles. Who brought us together. Brought us to, he did actually, yeah. Okay, so that was, like you say, there's no typical working day. What are your hidden, if any, inspiration sources? I always say, like, you, you never do things to, you know, make your parents proud. You do things to spite them. So I think, you know, with, I'm not blaming my parents. They, they just had a working class mentality, you know, go to work, get a real job. Working online wasn't a real job, so when I was working online, they, they told me to get a real job. I think that I just want to prove everyone wrong, and people say to me, you can't buy more bars, so I do it. People say to me, you know, you, you can't do the news in Thai, so I did it in Thai. You know, I don't read Thai that well, but we, we did it anyway, because if you're an entrepreneur, you figure out a way of doing things. That palm tree behind you, you can't climb that. No. <laughs> I'm telling you, you can't do it. You give me the right tool, I can. There we go. <laughs> I'll just cut it down and do whatever you need me to do. Thinking out of the box. 
how do you generate new ideas? Do they just come to you or do you generate them or they just come to you from day to day, time to time, talking to others? Yeah, one of my downsides is I'm, I'm not good at finishing things. That doesn't mean things don't get finished. That just means I don't finish them. And one of my good and bad points is ideas. Um, I find it when you're drifting in and out, sleep in the morning, when I'm driving, I drive a lot. It could be just um, going along, but what I get really annoyed by this and it's almost like an illness because I like one day I'm thinking, you know, I, I just want it out of the news. Let's just sound my percent and I'll just help AJ. And then I think then and today it's like, I want to expand it. And then another day it's like, I've got ideas um, in, in like in the bar area and then I've got other ideas. So it's almost like a, um, a blessing, but it's almost like an illness too, because it just means I end up following all these ideas and and sometimes I just say to myself, I wish I could just relax. But I, one of my problems was, is I was watching too many successful people on YouTube that are saying, you know, like Gary Vee, like work, 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 Crank Cardone's like 10X, you know, I don't watch those guys anymore, but whether people love them or hate them, they've all got value. And then I just go on one thing to the other and then I just cycle. And now my, I've got a goal list on my, and a daily task list and I've got all these like pages on my, paper and I'm meant to read them every day and part of it is part of it is to learn every day yeah. and then part of it is to keep my ideas within the three or four subjects I'm doing yeah. like I wanted to do coaching and then I've had YouTube videos on there for about two years and then I've had um, you know my Muay Thai and fitness on there because that's been on and off because of my health and then obviously the bars are, are, are not on there because the bars are automatic for me. It's like uh, I'm thinking about that all the time. Shiri, can you help him with the mic? I don't want it rubbing on his neck. Can you put his mic down for me? Like that. This, this uh, stream, by the way, Mr. Brian Flowers, is also sponsored by Shiri Amore Travels. He's going to check your microphone for you right now. Yeah, it kept rising up and then on your um, designer stubble, it was rubbing. <laughs> what best motivates you? I think not, I think um, trying not to lose uh, motivates me. I think um, all the negativity that you face in Bataya, anyone that does anything successfully, they're on a barrage of people trying to discredit you, trying to make up ideas of how you're doing everything. Like, I just spoke to Andre that's a sauna owner and he wants out of business here because there's a lot of bitterness and jealousy and you're just constantly getting attacked and the YouTubers get it much more than that. And it's thanks to these guys that I've done so much because they're constantly trying to discredit you. A lot of these haters try and say that I'm a thief and laundering money and selling drugs because they, they think that I need money to survive here but the businesses are profitable I don't need investors and they think that that's going to like you know take the bottom out because all they want to do is they just want to destroy me so people discrediting you here but that makes me more driven all of my partners here are, are in town they're real people I'm a real person with real friends and family on my Facebook I have nothing to hide but all this negativity that you get in Bataya makes me five or 10 times stronger because I've, I've literally been attacked a few times about you know having so many bars and we're failing. And I've been on the phone and I've gone straight out there and I'm just like, you know, let's go for it. Let's get more bars. Let's work hard and let's grow the business twice as much. Since you started your entrepreneurial path, um, have any of your motivations changed since you started or evolved maybe? Yeah, it, one, because I've had health problems, I, I want to spend more time with the family and I want to be a better father. And even my wife said that I'm a much better father this time around and I'm being a better husband because I've got more time for them. So this is why I want to go down the lifestyle route because I'm just, just trying to go in, in a direction that is healthy for my family. I don't want my kids around the bars. I don't, I don't want them to be their future because 
I just feel as a father, I should be leading them towards healthy things, not unhealthy things. So having, having the fight business and having a brand for my children that should be worth money in 10 years time, having, having given them as a present is the best gift ever. I can give them that and they can, they've always got a place to stay because there's rooms there, they've always got a job. Did I answer that question then? What? Yeah, motivations. Oh, How yeah. they change, and they certainly have, because um, I guess the, the balance, the health, the balance of family, and realizing maybe the distancing of your family you're getting because you're focusing so much on business, on entrepreneurs, and one can easily forget, as I've done before, family and friends that are close to you so much need that time with you more. And well, that's why I do what I do because I'm. I, I'm able to stay at home all day, but when, when Anthony was growing up, I had to be in the bar a lot, and now I don't have to be. So, you know, my motivation has never been money. People think it is, but I, I, I've never wanted anything. I've got a nice car, but when I, when I came here, I, I was gonna earn 20 to 40,000 a month I was expecting. I never expected to be any more than that. But I love employing people and to do that you need money. So what I like to do is I like to create businesses around people if I can. If someone came to me and they had no money and they were hard working and all the stars aligned, I would actually invest in a business with them if, if everything was right. But people can't just message me for those sort of things. Like People message me and ask me things straight away. You have to get to know people slowly with no pressure and see them in bad situations over the years. Absolutely. So how long would you say you stick with an idea before giving up? Or do you never give up? Maybe you pass it on to somebody else to continue with. It's... There's quite a few ideas that I've not given up on. They're still on the list, but you've got something which is called sunk costs, where you put so much into an idea. I spent a year learning how to trade and building up with this network and everything. And I just kept on thinking, this is boring. Like. I spoke to quite a few traders and they said, why are you bothering? You're a business person, it's much easier. So like trading, I've probably given up on that, but I haven't let it go yet. There's no um, average time on giving up. I, it's not normally me that gives up in things, it's normally other people around me. Quite. But no, I haven't, there's, there's no particular thing which I gave up on, restaurants I gave up on for sure. Doesn't mean I won't do it again. What would you say your greatest entrepreneurial achievement to be proud of? It has to be um, the forum or it has to be like Nightwish Group. Yeah. It, could, it could be the news. It, I'm better off saying it's the news, but the only reason why I say the forum is because I, I got annoyed on Bataille Talk and I got a warning and I said, right, that's it. I'm going to go and do my own forum. And there was um, a couple of guys on there. One was called Sen, one of them was called Sexy Beast, and one of them was called Braveheart. And between all of them, I've seen some you know, good stuff with them. Sexy Beast, I asked him if he could join me, and he said, yeah, and he was inviting loads of people in. I was being more of a technical guy. A guy called Braveheart, he was um, doing like, you know, 10 times more posts than me. And then there was another guy that just um, liked to comment a lot. So between all of us, we, we built this forum up, but if it didn't have my vision and me saying, you know, stuff like the, the other forums were massive and people said, you're never going to survive. You're never going to be the biggest forum. And because I'm very optimistic, I said, it doesn't matter. We'll get there in the end. I didn't even want to be the biggest. I just had no plans. I just wanted a more friendly forum. So I think the audience has to decide on that. Monetary wise, I think um, the bars have been best, but the form has been most useful into bringing me here. Do you have any shortcuts? Maybe, uh, what are your shortcuts to successfully handle frustration and stress? You've got to have an, you've got to have a sport. A lot of people in my position would drink themselves to death or take drugs. You've got to have an outlet. And I've said that to my main guy, Vag, loads of times. You know, he's stressed a lot and I just said to him, you've got to get, you've got to run it off. Like now he's running, even if it's just um, hitting some tennis balls around or just anything. It could be going off and shagging loads of gills. It could be, you know, I wouldn't recommend drinking 
drinking and, and drowning your sorrows because you just wake up with more sorrows and that takes time. I, I recommend come down my gym and train that, and, and all your stress will when go. When does that open? Uh, I think it opens on the 1st or tomorrow, I'm not sure. But if you come down there and just, just hit the bags and shout and scream and you'll feel a lot better. Because the more you shout, the harder you can hit anyway. So that's the first tip. And what book, talking about, yeah, script, what book has inspired you the most? What, do you have a favourite book? I'll tell, you, I'll tell you, it was a game changer for me, Tony Robbins. And it, and it wasn't, I went on one of his courses first. My mate said to me, I've, I've paid for a Robbins, Anthony Robbins ticket for you in London. We're going for three days. I had absolutely no money at all. Unleash and, the power within? Yeah, it was. And it was like, he said there's going to be 15,000 people here. And he said, take your trainers because you're going to be dancing. I said, there's no way I'm dancing unless I'm taking drugs, alcohol, <laughs> whatever. I'm not going to do that straight, straight hey, face. Hey, but he was your drug, right? Uh, Tony, he, he did it, you know. Yeah. He just said, dance as stupid as you can, which everyone can do. 2, 2 a.m which suited me seven it was seven seven days or five days so i went to the tony robbins thing and then i started listening to his audio books uh, i know he's got books but i was jogging every morning and i listened to it and i thought he said make a decision and make a decision was right i'm going to sell the forum and i actually sold the forum to a couple of friends one of them is my partner now and anyway it, it didn't work out so i had it back but then my next decision was to move to Thailand on the back of being on Tony, Tony Robbins' um, course. But then about six months ago, I, I listened to a book called um, Millionaire Fast Lane. The reason why I'm answering this now is, is that book is, more, is one of the best books ever. I wish I read that 10, 15 years ago. So if anyone's looking for inspiration or to change the way they are, watch uh, Millionaire Fast Lane. And if you want motivation, you know, Grant Cardone, I know he's a bit funny and he's a bit like a sales guy, but he's got like a 10X book and he's got a few motivational books. And then Gary V has a few books. They're all inspirational. And to be honest with you, what I found with lots of these books is they have the same message and you can just find a 10 minute summary on um, YouTube. So I, I did um, an article about how to learn and instead of buying courses and reading whole books, you can just go on blink lists, listen to a summary or on Facebook, uh, on YouTube. And a lot of these books have the same message. So someone said to me the other day, you need to listen to this book. And I'll say, no, I've already listened to a different book which has the same message. So all, all you try and do is from one book is just get that mindset soaked in. You're not there for the stories. The stories are just to convince you that the ideas are real. You just go through the mindset and just soak it up and just try to believe it without having to listen to stories. When facing hardships in business, um, who is your greatest support? Could it be a, one of the authors of the books maybe? Or is it your soulmate? I don't, I, don't want to, I don't want to say I don't have support because I do, but a lot of the problems that I face, no one else that I know has faced problems. and. The higher you go, the more lonely you get, and that, that's financially, and it's business-wise too. Like, yes, I can speak to CEOs of other companies, and I do know a lot of people, but my problems are very specific, you know. I, I have problems that, because of the nature of Nightwish Group not being 100% legal, I can't go and see the CEO of, like, Tesco's and say, how do I deal with this situation? I'm more likely to have to go to a drug dealer and say, how do I deal with this situation? You know, so I don't have any specific go-to people, but I, I always say like my mentors have been people online and I'm just listening to them. And, I, and like Gary Vee, for example, when I first started listening to him, yes, he comes across as arrogant, but you need a certain amount of arrogance to, to, to be in his position. I, I, I started thinking, you know, there's, there's guys out there that like me that um, don't, that don't understand the situations I'm going through, like the power of compounding. I say to people, instead of buying one bar, buy five bars, and people look at me like, you know, I'm crazy. And I'll, I'll go backwards, like, you know, when, when you're in COVID, 
a lot of people are cutting throats, but whereas me, it's like, let, let's employ more people, let's get stronger. But people don't always agree with this. I just say, let's go to the opposite direction of everyone else. So to have a mentor, it's very difficult to, to say there's one person that, to go to. I, I've met a few guys that appear to be rich, but they don't know anything. They've just been handed it from their family and they're not interested in learning or talking about books. So you mentioned about having so many ideas and things getting off the ground and not finishing them as quickly as you hope because another idea has come along that takes your focus away and you want to now start concentrating on that. It's maybe more beneficial to financially or for family-wise. Um, would you consider that a weakness or what would you consider to be your weakness? Um, if anything. Yeah, jumping from one thing to the other is a weakness. I, my, uh, there's, a, there's mental health issues in my family. And one of the things I forgot to answer earlier, like my motivation, I've all, I, I've, I won't say that I've, I'm depressed because that's the wrong thing. But if I stop moving, depression hits me hard. So I don't want people to say to me, oh, yeah, sorry to hear you're depressed. I am depressed if I stop. If I stop adding value, Today I could be training all day and that's adding value. I'm making a video today, so today's a good day. Tomorrow, if I do absolutely nothing, I just get, it's like I hit, get hit by a bus. So that's why I'm always doing things. So one of my weaknesses is that I can't, I can't stop loading things onto my family. It's like, you know, we're gonna do this now. We've got more pages added on. We've got, oh yeah, I'm, I'm getting this place now. So. I'm bringing ideas to people around me and I'm doing a good job with things like that, but I'm also loading the jobs that I have to do. So anyone that wants to be in a position where they've got lots of businesses, they have to think about all of the stress and coping with it. And I try to ignore a lot of the things that most people would find very stressful. So yeah, that's a bad point because you're making yourself more stressed. And I think the happy, true happiness is having health having a good sport to do and less about money. Obviously, providing for your family is good. What would you say you do on a daily basis to grow as an entrepreneur? I'm always learning every day. I'm always um, networking. When I, when I mean networking, I'm not doing things in person. I've seen two guys today and I've talked to them both about business ideas and things that are going on. And, and I'm talking about business again now today. So pretty much all day I'm talking about businesses. Awesome. And what's, <clears throat> what would you say your way of hunting talents and building effective working teams to achieve great results? I, I remember, if I, not to quote you exactly, but I, I recall reading on, on a web page once, um, the perfect bar manager, for example, for one of your bars. <clears throat> No, it's not live, it's recorded. Okay. <laughs> would be, you know, um, I think it was more of a, a pre-vetting qualification statement you made about the perfect bar manager for one of your bars, as an example, would be one that's never managed a bar before. Is that one of your ways of hunting talents and building effective work into it? I don't, I don't hunt talent for um, bar managers anymore. We have like... A process with um, Gary but I'm always looking for people to be around me in my close in my close um, close circle so I, I look for people that are more um, lone wolves people that don't like go go telling things all the time people I can trust and people that are loyal because there's no point putting loads of work into someone and then they just disappear like I understand people being entrepreneurs and entrepreneurs but if I, if I train someone up and I help them, it would be nice like if I could be included in their next business. Well, I want everyone around me to have businesses because it helps each other. I've got three or four friends around me at the moment and even my dad, I'm trying to convince him to do YouTube. I want everyone to be in the same boat. I can help him, he can help me and we're all in it together. And, we, and one of my mottos for Nightwish Group, which I, you know, rise together, you know, we have to bring each other up. What are the main principles you follow to build a successful customer relationship? 
I don't have, I don't have, I don't deal with customer relationships um, anymore. I used to, I, when I, when I ran bars, I used to do bar crawls and then when I used to sit in the bar every day and I've still got loads of friends from when I ran bars and I still talk to them. Um, with the gym, it's going to be more interesting because I'm going to see customers face to face. And, you know, there's going to be a lot of people there that are expecting a lot of my time for very little, but I'm happy if, if I can keep people around me happy. I'm not going to sit there for three hours. I would talk when someone's spending 300 baht. You know, I just, my time is very limited. Even today, I was seeing someone and after 15 minutes I had to go. And then I, I'm just moving around all day. If we can move on now maybe to some more critical thinking questions. Do you believe there is a winning formula for becoming a successful entrepreneur? Um, and what is yours if there is one? I think the willing, winning formula is finding, understanding psychology. I love uh, Jordan Peterson. I love following all of his stuff. I love Robert Greene. If you can understand psychology, you know, at the end of everything, you're selling to human beings. And if you're buying a hotel or anything, it depends on the location. If you've got a website, it's psychology, everything's psychology. So I think if you're a sociopath, it can work quite well because you can cut people's throats easy and, and you know, but on the other side, if, if you're a, um, person that understands people then you'll do very well you'll thrive and I think one of the secrets to wealth is making people around you wealthy because what what a lot of unsuccessful people do is they just try and pay small salaries and people around you will just leave if you pay someone a decent amount of money like say say you're buying a container load of bricks off someone and then you just cut them to the last bit of money then you're probably never going to see that person again unless they're, they're, they're desperate for sales. But if you pay them enough so they can keep in business, you can keep that relationship going all year round and they're more likely to help you. So I always say to people, don't try and cut people down to the last bit. It's always like, you know, let, let's shave as much money as we can off. Yeah, but then people go out of business. People say to me, we should have cheaper prices. There's a lot of bar owners and restaurants around with, dirt cheap prices and they run out of cash and they go home. The customers don't care about that, but for the person that's lost all of his money and his livelihood and possibly affected some children's lives, I would rather that I'd rather pay a, a larger amount and, and keep someone in business for a long time. And would you say entrepreneurs originally are born as such or are they raised to be successful or self-developed? having been inspired? I think um, entrepreneurs are born when there's people out there with ideas. You know, like some of the best ideas have have come from people where they they spotted something, you know. Like if you're phoning up a sign company and no one wants to come and it takes five days to get a sign company to come. And I think, well, why don't I have my own sign company? And I- I, Solving. Yeah, problem solving, but it's a good question because I've always tried to teach my son how to be an entrepreneur and it's very difficult because you do have to have critical thinking and problem solving in your mind and you do have to be open-minded but what I'm trying to do with my kids is I'm trying to keep them open-minded if you if you want to create money for yourself you just have to go out there and find your own idea you can't just keep copying people all the time how would you say you identify business opportunities? You touched on it there, problem solving. Um, what are the metrics do you use to measure that viability? I haven't solved any real problems yet. I mean, with the with Nightwish Group, I, I was one of the first ones to, you know, say let's have a guy managing it, and then he gets commissioned drinks, and let's have. Let's let's have a group of bars. There is a night. There is um, a French group with um, a load of go go's, but we we've been around for seven eight years. I'm not sure how how long they've been around, but it is a un, unique idea. So I haven't solved any problems, but I, I think that we've professionalised the industry a lot more because there's a lot of hobbyists around. And with the with the um, fight gym, I've, I haven't solved any problems there, but I hope I'll solve solve some people's problems. 
like with the bars, we've helped tons of people get together. We've helped tons of people, you know, finally be free. I mean, they could have chose anyone else's bar, so we're not taking credit for it, but we've had tons of divorced guys coming in, having the time of their lives. So we're helping people one by one. So you feel, or you know, that, uh, and I've certainly heard it many times before, that because the entry point to owning a bar over here is so cheap in comparison to maybe their own home Farang country, is uh, because it's so cheap uh, to get into owning a bar, you find a lot of people are doing it as a, a hobby and they're throwing a bit of their retirement fund into something that they hope that can, it can work for them, yet they have no business acumen behind them. I see so many guys, they get their redundancy or they get um, their reti a block of retirement and then they automatically think that they're Thai girlfriend because she's Thai, she's an expert in business. And I seen a guy, he bought a go-go for his missus. Just because she worked in a go-go before and just because she's Thai, doesn't mean that she's going to make money. We're, we all have to learn business. And on the other side, people think that, oh, he's only a Farang. He's never going to have a have a media company. I said we're going to go Nightwish Group are probably going to have so soapies later. There's no Farang, as far as I know, in the whole of Thailand that have, have got soapies. But I said, let's do it. And what popular entrepreneurial advice do you agree or disagree with and why? What popular entrepreneurial advice i guess it's knowing what entre what popular entrepreneurial advice is well, out there's, there, there's a lot of advice out there about you know if you fail just like fail once and just the more you fail the more you learn so as an entrepreneur i think the best thing to do is look up the case study of a kfc guy and and the edison guy as well and just look at how people have failed continuously and don't be scared of failing as long as if you learn from it, there's nothing worse than seeing someone failing doing doing the same thing. If you fail, just make sure you treat your account like a trader a trader does. You know, don't use all your money on one project. If it's very safe and you know what you're doing and you've got a backup, then fair enough. But what I would say is a lot of people come to Thailand, and what I was trying to say earlier is they put all their money in their Thai, Thai girlfriend's name, and then they're like, okay, you're Thai, you can take care of the bar but like they give them nothing to do it. And of course she's going to agree because she's just been given a business for free. So you've got to learn together and you've got to, as an entrepreneur, you have to learn continuously. You have to look for opportunities all the time and you don't take no for an answer. Like we were making phone calls the other day to try and get a payment processor. Don't get off the phone. They're going to say no. Ask them if they know who, who they know any tips for the next phone call, any any ways around it. You know, you've, you've always got to walk away from something. If you see a landlord and you're looking for a bar, ask her what other properties she's got. Ask her if she knows anyone. Ask her as many questions as you can. Who was in the business before? Why did they fail? Everyone's got um, value to offer. I think you've already addressed this by highlighting um the Colonel himself, Mr. KFC and Edison, the light bulb and the, the 10,000 times before it actually worked <clears throat> and never giving up. But is there, um, if, if you could talk to one person in history, who would it be and why? Um, yeah, that, that's a tough question because I always think about, um, I, I don't know, it's very hard to tell. Sometimes I feel like Tony Soprano, you know, having the family on one side and then I've got the bars on the other side. And then sometimes I would like to talk to a PR guy, you know, that's been really successful at PR. Sometimes I would probably like to talk to someone that's um, been strategic in war, like Winston Churchill. So I don't, I don't have anyone that I really want to talk to. Patrick Bet David was someone that I've been following for a long time and I've spoken to him online before and I was going to meet him when, and I actually booked um, a ticket for his conference. But Patrick Bet David is one of the f few YouTubers that I follow now. He's got a, a channel called Value Entertainment. Yeah, he's um, an entrepreneur type guy. And all he does is he reads books like me and then he puts them into videos. So he's constantly um, 
he taught me basically to to learn you need to teach so if i learn something i need to i need to teach it jesus there's hundreds of them yeah it might be yeah we've got 40 minutes left and above your head there's like a hundred i can't it's, that's yeah. ridiculous we may have to cut it there because <laughs> it's just going to get worse you've got 200 above your head yeah waiting to dive bomb you they're all female ones though they're okay i mean male can you get more of this Oh, what are those oh, ones with the big wings? Are they, are they, they're moths. They're flying ants, aren't they? Oh, it's okay. Let's just keep going. Okay. Who is the one entrepreneur, though, to be your greatest example and inspiration? I know you've already mentioned Mr. Branson. Who is your number one go-to entrepreneur for inspiration? I don't... You know, I've watched Gary Vee for a long time because Gary Vee, his message is work. I've got a lot of friends that suffer from procrastination and they just say, how do you fix procrastination? I said, well, work. There's no, like, fix to it. I've read books on how to fix procrastination. How do you... I can't say it, I'm dehydrated. Um, procrastination. Yeah, procrastination. I've read books on, on how to get around it, but while you're reading a book, you think, well, I'm procrastinating again. <laughs> and this is the best thing about courses is... You can do 10 zillion courses, so you still feel like you're executing an idea and it makes you feel less guilty because I feel guilty when I'm not doing anything. So uh, Gary Vee is a good motivator. There's, there's other guys, but people judge you. Like Grant Cardone, there's a lot of people that don't like him, but he's, he's very energetic. And, you know, Dan, Dan Locke, for example, he was, um, he was good because he, he's just given like value of stuff he's learned. But then his business practices I don't like at all. And then Dan Penner, I just love Dan Penner because he's so honest and he's just so brutal. And, you know, I would love to have the same meeting as Dan Penner and just shout at people in a respectful way. But it, he does take it too far and he does talk a load of nonsense. But I think he's amazing either way because he just abuses everyone. And I think there's no more honesty than abusing people. And I, and I mean that in a... a in a non-personal way like instead of sugarcoating everyone and saying how wonderful they're doing you know give everyone a bit of tough love he's like the grand he's like the angry grander that, that some people didn't get i must say we're not even 50 percent through um brian but you're going amazing with this uh, marathon of an interview so i appreciate you sticking it around the flying flying ants are enjoying it got about 300 Mosquitoes above your head right now. They're, they're, they're male ones waiting for females to fly past. They're trying to get laid while I'm getting interviewed. <clears throat> so moving on swiftly. How would you scale the advantages and disadvantages of being an entrepreneur? Wow. How would you scale? Them? Well, the, the advantage is, is um, you know, you could look at your lifestyle. You know, people always talk about money and entrepreneurship but for me it's not about that it's about having choices you know i i had a car rental business and i had seven cars to choose from some sometimes they weren't rented out so what i did um it made me realize that having more than one car is stressful so basically i would never have more than you know two or three cars so entrepreneur entrepreneurship's taught me a lot i've been able to travel because my time's free and then also I get invited to things because of who people see me as as on their level sometimes. So like even if it's someone super rich as a CEO of a company, they'll pay attention to me because they like my mindset. So it, it opens tons of doors for me. But at the same time, you've got a burden. Join, join the happy time. People are envious of um, entrepreneurs. And right now, join COVID, people are getting their ass kicked and they're getting their ass handed to them. So now is a time when entrepreneurs are getting a good beating. I'll just try and ignore them because it's going to be annoying for people watching. There's hundreds of them on me. <laughs> you let me know when you want to relocate or call it for another time. I've you, never seen it. Do you want to stop it?
Yeah, we can do that. Okay, cheers. <laughs> Their wings are coming off and they're walking all over me. Yeah. I know, I thought, yeah, why are their wings coming off? Look, I didn't even touch them. Do you think they'll go away or do you think uh, that's no. it? No, it's like the atmospheric condition. I remember in the UK, there were certain conditions in the summer when loads of flying ants would come out and they'd be like dominating over one night, only one day. Do you think we could walk and talk or not? I'll tell you what, they follow you, them, for a start, above your head. It's really weird. They just follow you. That's a, that's a video in itself. Look, they followed you. <laughs> and then maybe these ones follow us as well. They follow me because they know a female is going to come and bite me in a minute. It's ridiculous. This is like a plague. To yeah. Complain to the shop owner. You reckon they hate the light? Oh, that's crazy. All right, let's go. Oh, going down my houses now. God, there's hundreds of them. Yo.